Hello, everybody. Welcome to the women that the welcome to the women that Elvis loved episode four. Oh my gosh, it's that title that gets me, Miss Rhonda. Anyways, welcome to our show. We're going to do our show tonight on June Onico, and she does have a book, and um, we're going to tell you some uh, thoughts about Elvis's girlfriend, June, and um, the history that they had. Hey, Miss Rhonda. Hi, Shauna. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our show tonight. Uh, I hope you enjoy this segment, June. Um, we decided to to just have this segment on June because of the fact that she does have a book and there's so much to say about her. Um, they had quite a quite a little romance between the two of them, and so I think um, y'all may learn something new about her tonight so anyway we're excited i'm i'm ready to talk about her how about you shauna oh yes it's very interesting her story um i want to tell you guys uh that this is for entertainment and educational purposes only okay this is an opinionated show this is based on our personal opinion and research um i suggest that you guys do your own research and find a, a conclusion to whatever you get to but I have a feeling that this one's going going to be fun because June and Elvis, I think, were very much in love with some of the aspects that are now coming into light about their relationship. So without further ado, guys, I'm gonna read you a little bit a little bit about June. And I wanna get uh Miss Rhonda to fill in the blanks for us after I get done reading all this stuff to you guys, okay? Okay. June Juanico, born 1938, is a former beauty queen and an Elvis Presley fan from Biloxi, Mississippi, whom Elvis dated in 1955 and 1956. Elvis took three weeks of vacation with June in 1956 after having recorded his songs, Hound Dog and Don't Be Cruel, in the studio of Memphis, Tennessee. June had met Elvis for the first time after one of his early concerts in Biloxi, 1955, when he was on the verge of superstardom. She is said to have been the only girl Elvis's mother ever approved of. However, Elvis didn't let his romance get in intimate. In 1997 interview with San Francisco Chronicle, June Juanico said she blames her, she blames his manager, Colonel Tom Parker, for encouraging Elvis to go out with beautiful women for publicity. According to Elvis's biographer, Peter, uh, is that Grolnick? 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 I'm not yeah. sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I think it's well, Grolnick. Uh, Monico didn't doubt that Elvis loved her. I am going to interrupt for just a minute here because the last one we were talking about, Dixie Locke, last week, Gladys approved of her, too. In fact, yes, she, she was did. encouraging early marriage. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do this because it is a known fact that if she did it with Dixie, maybe she did it with June, too, because she just wanted Elvis to get married. Like She needed to see her grandbabies. Like, you better hurry up. I don't know. I think this is the second one that this is a said that she approved of when Dixie Locke was the first, really. I, yes, and I think she approved of Anita Wood as well. And that's going to uh, be later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is, yeah. yeah. Okay. Juanico, El, oh, excuse me. June Juanico, Elvis was the love of my life. I met him in the summer of 55 when he just had regional star, stardom. I was 17 and he was 20. He had been in, a, in my hometown of Biloxi, Mississippi, several times before. People said, you need to see him. And I went, I went on this one night. I thought he was the most gorgeous thing. Big, dreamy eyes. Girls were screaming over him. And I'm just not that kind. I was passing by him, not even looking at him. And he reached through the crowd and grabbed my arm. He said, where are you going? <laughs> what I remember most about the night was sitting in his car outside my house, just talking while my mother kept an eye out to see what I was doing. The first thing I said was, what's your real name? 
I had never heard of a name like Elvis. And he said, what do you mean what's my real name? My name is Elvis Aaron Presley. He sat there until the sun came up at 6 a.m. He was shocked because my parents were divorced. He thought marriage was a lifelong thing. When he, when he got married, it was going to be forever. And he told me all about his twin. He was dead at birth. I never met anybody quite like him. Yeah, he thought marriage was forever. Poor Elvis. Poor, poor guy. We got so wrapped up in the kissing in our very first date. Another thing about the kissing when they first meet. I mean, I guess that shy boy wasn't quite as shy once the, uh, you know, shy part passed away. You know, he would be a kissing. It's always right then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know another lady, Kathy Tatum, said the same thing. It's what mm -hmm. it was like immediately. Like, mouth went to mouth. <laughs> All right. But I didn't hear from him for a while after that. It turned out he was calling and my older brother wasn't bothering to tell me. Finally, he said, some guy with a hillbilly accent called. For one and a half years, I dated him. Our relationship remained chaste. He was very tender and considerate. We spent so much time together, and we started talking about marriage, and Mrs. Presley, Gladys, liked me. She saw me as domestic and wise for my young years. She was always telling me that Elvis needed someone to take care of him. Yeah, because maybe she knew her time was growing short, and she needed to find someone that would take care of her boy when she wasn't around. I don't know. It's, it's kind of like mama intuition. Maybe. Well, I, I will say this, that... Um I think Gladys had a respect for June because June would seem to be very level headed. Um, she seemed to be a lot like them. She didn't think high of herself. She wasn't, you know, she was just, just a normal everyday girl and she and Gladys really clicked. So I, she trusted her. Yeah, I can see. But Elvis was becoming more famous. And his manager, the colonel, wanted him linked with actresses and Vegas showgirls. Of course, Elvis liked legs that went on for days. I see that. Mm -hmm. Wasn't Priscilla 5'3", though? Yeah. June says he was a leg and butt man. That's well, what she said. Priscilla didn't have the legs. Uh-uh. Mm. Must have been her butt. Mm. I'm sorry, guys. I think it's funny in my head when I read this. He had a light leg that went on for days, and he brought one of those showgirls home for Christmas in 56. That did it for me. I decided to marry someone else, and Elvis said the colonel said he couldn't get married, that he wouldn't dare do that to the colonel. Yeah, because this isn't the first story of why. The colonel wanted him to be seen as the bachelor, the always available man for the ladies, for the fans, you know, because that was the fantasy that they had. And the colonel wanted him to always look single and available for his um, celebrity because it made the females want him more. And, and, and the colonel thought if Elvis was settled down at this early on in his career, that it would um, make him look too wholesome. And that's not what the colonel was trying to sell at the time. You know, I have more to say on that when you finish reading the article. <laughs> okay. The next time I saw him was in a movie theater in Memphis in the early 60s. I went down the row behind him and tapped on the back and he turned around. Our eyes just locked. He got up and put me in a death grip. One of his guys ran over because he thought someone was abusing Elvis. But Elvis was holding on to me. Priscilla was sitting next to him. Uh-huh. And she was very gracious. She kept her eyes glued to the screen. Uh-huh. That's just, oh, that's, that's crazy. Gracious. I guess because I have them now. In August of 1977, my mother was at my house. I had laid down for a nap. When I came out of my bedroom, my mother was looking at me very strange. Finally, she said, June. She had tears in her eyes. She said, I just heard on the television that Elvis Presley has died. I looked at her and I said, that can't be. That can't be. I went over to the television and I fell to my knees in front of it. I couldn't breathe. 
I honestly think if my mother had not been with me, I might have died in my heart. I always thought Elvis and I would be together somewhere down the road. I was married for 36 years and I've got two beautiful children and beautiful grandchildren. I've been blessed in many ways, but I have just never been able to stop loving Elvis. There have been a lots of books written about Elvis Presley, but with her book, I'm sure we can get more of a what, what's going on in her life with him, Miss Rhonda. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I have a couple of things that I want to say. That, that's what I got. I don't want to bore y'all too much with too much <laughs> too much stuff to read. So you go, Miss Rhonda, fill in some of these okay. links. Okay, well, first of all, the article said that she was a beauty queen. And I've read several articles that said that she was. But I can find nothing anywhere where she was given a title like um, Linda was or um, Ginger was or some of the other girls he dated like um, – the girl from Georgia who was also on Hee Haw. I forget her name, but he dated a lot of girls with titles. I don't think June ever had one. So I wanted, I wanted to comment on that. Um, the first time she met Elvis was um, her best friend had seen him the night before in a concert. I guess he was doing shows all along in that area around Biloxi. And he was performing at, the Airmen's Club, Airmen's Club, which was an Air Force base or something. And they had a friend who was, um, <laughs> their father was in the Air Force and they were able to get him in. And she was underage. You were supposed to be 18 at that time to be able to get into a club. But um, she was 17 and they managed to, to get in without being carded or anything like that. And, um, her friend basically just made her go. She didn't really, really want to because she was dating someone else at the time who she said was just a very handsome, good looking, wholesome guy. And, you know, everybody in town loved this guy and thought he was so, so good looking. So when she went and Ellis came out on stage, she said she was just flabbergasted. She said, because as good looking as this guy is that she's dating currently, he couldn't hold a candle to Elvis. She said, my gosh, he was the most beautiful thing I have ever seen in my life. Said he was just perfect, you know? And how many people have we heard say that before, Shauna? I mean, he literally, I don't know, but. Well, for one, it must be, it has to be against the law to be so pretty. You know, just just everybody who ever was with him, even men that have known him, like Jerry Reed and stuff, never met a man so pretty. Yeah, and they 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 said that too. It's just just yeah. his looks. Yeah. So anyway, but she was a very cool customer. June Juanico was, and um, apparently she knew she was beautiful as well. And so she just played it really um, down low and um, they had gotten up, her and her best friend Patty had gotten up to go to the bathroom, if I'm recalling the story correctly. And um, Elvis was standing kind of in the, the area and they had to walk by him. Her friend's like, come on, come on, come on. Let's go walk by him. Maybe, maybe he'll talk to us, you know. And June's like, I don't want to do that. And she's like, come on, come on, come on. Well, so when she left out of the bathroom, her friend goes and makes it to the table. But Elvis had reached out through the crowd and there were more people standing around, apparently, and grabbed her by the wrist and said, and just where do you think you're going? Are you leaving? Which is what the article said. But it was in between sets. The article didn't say that. So it was in between sets. So she said, no, uh, I'm going to go sit and watch the rest of the show. And he said, well, um, can you show me around Biloxi? I've never, you know, I don't know what there is to do here. She goes, well, there's not a lot to do here. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, after the show, could we um, maybe go get something to eat, get a Coke or something? And, you know, you can show me around. She said, okay, I can do that. 
so she did and that started just you know a year and a half romance with him and um they hit it off really good right at first um they ended up going out to a pier and they sat and talked a long time then they came back and they were parked in front of her mother's house and she didn't walk in i don't think till about four in the morning and her mother was about to have a cow but she says but mama was just sitting right outside the house and her mom was like okay well and you know what a charmer elvis is you know by the time he met the mom he had everybody eating out of his hand he just knew how to do that he there was something about his sweet southern charm that i don't care who you were he could just have you just right where he wanted you you know he just knew how to get what he wanted and um you know he wasn't ugly either so that kind of helped just a whole lot so long story short um he said that he would be calling her again and getting in touch with her well she didn't put a lot of stock in it she hoped he would but she went on about her life and did things and um little did she know that he had been calling her but june was a very busy girl and she was going out with other people and her brother failed to tell her that she had been getting these long distance calls until much much later and she assumed it was elvis that had been trying to call her i well, hope she gets good with her brother after that because it would be hard i would be like well, how did you do that you well, know your own brother him. not tell you elvis called i mean come on yeah. ladies and gents if that happened to you guys i know you'd be a little upset with your brother well, I, would I don't think i would have been but i in his defense, I don't think Elvis told him who he was. He mm. just asked, is June home? And the brother would always say, no, she's not. He would say, okay, thank you. He would never say, would you tell her Elvis called? So mm. she, you know, he didn't know. All he said was, he sounded like a country hick. <laughs> That's what he told her. He said, the guy sounds like a country hick. Well, June. Well, some hillbilly I'm trying to call you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So June figured it was Elvis. Well, her friend decided that she wanted to take a vacation to Memphis. Now, this is where it gets kind of confusing to me. June mentions that she didn't know Elvis lived in Memphis, but I think maybe she did because later I've read somewhere or in an article that they were going around Memphis asking if people knew where Elvis lived. And at the time he was on Audubon Drive. So they found out where he lived, whether she knew he lived there or not, beats the heck out of me. So they go and Elvis, they said, well, the people told him, you know, Elvis lives on Audubon Drive, but he's out of town. And June was disappointed, you know, so they, they pull up to the house and, um, he has a fence and she is like actually sitting on the fence and she can tell that something's going on in the backyard and that he was having a pool put in. So she's sitting on the fence. Her other friend is looking over the fence and about that time in pulls this car and in it is Elvis, Gladys and Vernon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Elvis stops the car, he gets out, and he said, June, what are you doing here? And she said, well, I thought you were out of town. And he said, well, I was supposed to be, but this is when, y'all remember he had a cousin that passed away? This is when the cousin passed away, and he had to come back off, out of, off the tour to go to the funeral. So they had just gotten back from the funeral. And um, so he invited her and her friend Patty up to the house and it started all over again. And I mean, from that point on, it was nonstop. Um, I guess he ended up taking a vacation, a three week vacation in Biloxi. This is where you've seen the pictures of him on a boat with June and 
I think Red West and his mom and his dad mm -hmm. and they go deep sea fishing, all that. Yeah. That's when all of this happened. And it was just this oh, crazy, fast romance. They fell in love with each other. And I think he really did love her. Um, but Elvis being Elvis, you know, as things go on, um, he would have her come to Memphis. She flew into Memphis. She stayed at his house. They did stay in the same room, but um, she was very funny about not wanting the door to be shut. <laughs> she said, because I don't want your mama to think I'm a bad girl because I'm not, we're not doing anything in here. She goes, but I want your mama to know we're not doing anything in here. Yeah, so that would be a weird, that would be a weird, like, situation. I wouldn't want yeah. Goddess to think me a bad girl either. So yeah. I get what she's saying. She wants yeah. to look good with Gladys. Yeah. Today. And Gladys was fine with her staying in there, but um I think Gladys was a little more open minded than, than well, she was more credit for. I think but. Gladys was more upset about Elvis bringing a showgirl for Christmas that they've never met. Then she really was with someone he's dating to be over to spend the night. It's just to her, she didn't like how some of the fame, I think, was changing her son a little bit. A little bit, she you know, did. bringing showgirls for Christmas. It's supposed to be family. I think, of course, him being the soft heart that he was, he knew that she was going to spend the holidays alone. So he invited her to Memphis to spend. I mean, but I don't. Uh, he's not the only me. one that drove a wedge. If I remember correctly, Miss Rhonda, Natalie Wood drew a wedge in between them too, because in between, that's who he was seeing as well. He was. Well, that's another story. Um, yeah. Nick Adams, I don't know if y'all recall that name or not. Um, come to find out when june was in memphis nick adams also came in and june seems to think that the colonel had spies june makes no bones about it she could not stand colonel tom parker she felt like he was to blame for um their relationship not going further than it did he did not want Elvis seeing one person exclusively. He did not want Elvis being linked to one girl. He really didn't like the fact that June went on the Florida tour with him and was at all the places. And the Colonel did not treat her very nicely. And he let Elvis know that he did not approve. So, mm -hmm. She says that Nick Adams and a guy named Bitsy Mott, who was Bitsy Mott was the Colonel's brother-in-law, that they worked for Elvis, Bitsy did, and apparently, actually, they worked for the Colonel. Bitsy and Nick Adams were paid by the Colonel to spy on Elvis, and apparently Elvis did not know it at the time. So when June comes to Memphis, the Colonel must have gotten some kind of wind that she was there because Nick Adams ends up coming in. And when Nick Adams comes in, this is after the filming of Love Me Tender. And apparently Elvis had met Natalie, Natalie Wood while he was on location. Nick comes in, he goes, oh, Elvis, um, Natalie asked me to bring you something. And this is so weird. So he comes in and he shows, he gives Elvis this dress that was Natalie Woods and she wanted Elvis to have it. Now, was it a dress that she had on when they went out or something? I don't know. Um, but June, June played it off really cool, but she did not like well, Nick Adams. Maybe it was a dress that Natalie Wood had in the movie Rebel Without a Cause, which was one of Elvis's favorite movies. Maybe she thought, oh, maybe he might like that tight dress I wore in that movie. Well, apparently it was very tight. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, anyway, but Nick was always trying to throw a wrench into their relationship and she did not like him and she did that not sounds like, like the that sounds like the mo of the colonel he did the same thing 
when Elvis is or, uh, later years. Uh, some people do know who the Colonel Spies were from time to time, and they have been named. Yeah, they um, have been. And so, you know, but I think the straw that broke the camel's back with June and Elvis was he would call her, his call started getting further and further apart. You know, like he, he there for a while, he was calling her every other day. And then it would stretch into a week. Then it would stretch into two weeks. And then, you know, she's reading all this stuff in the fan magazines and how that Elvis, you know, was with a showgirl or Elvis was with this person or, oh, Elvis brought a Vegas girl home for Christmas. Oh, Elvis brought another Vegas girl home. And she knew Natalie Wood was coming to visit him. And he had even asked her to stay in Memphis and meet Natalie. And Nick Adams told her, well, Elvis, maybe I need to call Natalie and tell her that she needs to come another time because there isn't enough room for all of us to stay here at your house. Good gosh, she is Natalie Wood. Tell her to get a hotel room for crying out loud if there's nothing going on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, in June, which you got to give her credit, she is a little feisty thing, um, which I think maybe a little bit like Anita Wood. And she said, um, you know what? I would love to meet Natalie Wood, but you're right. This house is too small and I'm going home. I'm going back to Biloxi. And Elvis begged her and begged her and begged her. And uh, she said, no, I'm going home. And it was mainly because of Nick Adams, because she could not stand him. Not one little bit could she stand that guy. So anyway, like I said, the story goes on and the calls started getting fewer and further between. And she started seeing more and more how he was seeing other people. And it bothered her. Because in true Elvis style, he wanted her to be true to him and he could see and do whatever he wanted to do. And it was the old double standard and she wasn't going to, she wasn't going to do that. And uh, she also had learned from going on tour with him that his lifestyle probably was not what she really wanted in life, that she did not want to constantly be having to go out from midnight on to just get away from the fans. I mean, everywhere he went, people were destroying his car. There was always, and it became more and more and more. There was a riot or there was this, or there were people who were, you know, even trying to get to her. She said that she had been with him and someone realized he wasn't even there, that she was Elvis's girlfriend and they chased her into a bathroom and she had to lock herself in the bathroom stall because they were trying to get a piece of her because of Elvis. And she just didn't, she said, she said it was just a lot. She said, but I did truly, truly love him. Um, but it was a lifestyle that I think in the end, she just couldn't do. And especially with all the other women. Which isn't that what most of them say? It's always the other women, you know, it's, that they they the couldn't handle it. Thing. It's the same thing because it's, mm -hmm. it's the same thing with any of them, and it's, yeah. he kind of never even breaks up with them. It's just, and you guys, June is eighty-four, I believe, and she is in a nursing home. Is she really now? Mm -hmm. I did not know that. She is. I heard that. And I do have an echo, and it wasn't before, so please forgive me, guys. I don't know what happened. I'm a steel person, yet I have an echo again. So maybe that's a good time to cut off for the night. Well, there is one more thing I wanted to tell you guys. Um, and I told Shauna before the show started, but I learned something new from her from the book. Um, Elvis always loved this book called The Prophet. And um, I'd always wondered, I, I just assumed maybe Larry Geller got him into it. Nope. It was June Juanico. She gave him the very first copy of The Prophet. And he read that thing from cover to cover and 
back again. And he kept it with him from the time that she gave it to him. He loved that book so much. He bought copies for other people and he gave it out to other people. And um, even she went to see him in, uh, I think the last time she saw him was in Las Vegas at a show. And she actually talked to him by phone um, and he brought it up that he still had the book and that he loved it. And that that was the one thing that when he got all keyed up and, and, and she said, Elvis would, he said he, he was just like, he would get so nervous and, and he would get jittery and whatever. And after a show, he would need something to calm him down. Or if he was doing two shows in between shows, he needed something to calm him down. And she said that book always brought her peace. And so she gave it to him thinking it might help him. And apparently it did. And he, you know, paid it forward to a lot of others. So um, I thought that was really cool. And, um, you know, it, it, I love the story. I loved the interaction that she had with Gladys. Um, I do think that after she ended up getting married, um, she broke Elvis's heart. <laughs> and Gladys wasn't too happy with her about that because she hurt her little boy. But, you know, Elvis was Elvis. And <laughs> he had a string of women, you know just everywhere and um he couldn't be faithful to just one so anyway i'm sure she will forever remember her time with elvis and it was a special thing and they remained friends till the very end um you know and he still called her baby when they would talk on the phone and um you know it was just one of those things, she met him at a really good point in his life and before he became too famous. And then she started riding the wave where it just got totally out of control. I mean, you think about it, Elvis's fame went so quickly, you know? And um, so anyway, he was just, she loved it. She loved him and um, that's it. That's pretty much all I've got to say. But if you haven't read the book, read it. I think you guys will love it. Well, now I'm going to have to read the book. So we'll, I'll get that read because it seems like it's a good book. So we will recommend that book. What is it called anyway? Show it. Do you have or no, you In the Twilight of Memory is what it's in called. The Twilight um, of Memory. We don't own the book. It was in audio form sent to us, so. Yeah, I don't have the book either. I had to listen to it on audio. I thought I was buying, downloading it on my iBooks um, as a read version, and it was audio. And I, I prefer the read versions, but anyway, but it was good. I enjoyed it. All right, guys, that's all we have on you. And I hope you enjoyed our little tidbits on her. If you enjoyed our show, please like and subscribe to our network. We would really love to have you on board. Um, also, Miss Kenya, thank you for the graphics. They were wonderful, girl. TCBT, I'll see. God bless y'all. And you know what? We'll see you on the other side. We'll see you on the other side, y'all. Bye, y'all.